Today's video is sponsored by TuxCare. As you may or may not be aware, CentOS 8 reaches end of life and will no longer receive security updates after December of 2021. In general, it could take days, weeks, or even months from when a vulnerability is discovered to when it receives a patch. But when it comes to distributions that have reached their end of life, the situation is even worse. End of life distros will no longer receive security patches from their vendor anymore, and that's a big problem. And that means that every day you run an end of life distribution on your server, you increase your chances of encountering a cybersecurity incident. In regards to CentOS 8, December of 2021 is it. There's no security patches coming after that. So if you're running CentOS 8 in production right now, it's time to plan how you're going to keep your server secure after that date. You can use this calculator that TuxCare has made available to determine the cost of running CentOS servers without support. Thankfully, TuxCare has an immediate solution. They're offering extended lifecycle support for CentOS 8 and will keep it supported with new security patches for four more years. This allows you to migrate your servers away from CentOS 8 at your own pace. With extended lifecycle support, you'll continue to receive patches and fixes as if the end of support for CentOS 8 never happened. Subscribe to CentOS 8 Extended Lifecycle Support by TuxCare by visiting the URL that you see on the screen, which is also in the description below. Thank you so much to TuxCare for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate it. And now, let's get started with today's video. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In the studio, I have right here the Stellaris 15 from Tuxedo Computers, and I'm going to be giving it a full review in this video. And this notebook features some serious power. You can choose between AMD Ryzen 9 or Intel i7 CPUs. It features a powerful NVIDIA GPU, a 3K display, and more. This model in particular is a 15.6 inch notebook, just like the name would imply. And it's aimed toward customers that want a more powerful computer, either for getting some higher end work done or playing games. Now, when you have a notebook that is marketed towards people that want a more higher end computer, some portability is going to be sacrificed with that power. And often battery life is a sacrifice as well. But the goal with this particular model was to not sacrifice those things as much as possible. Before we get started though, a quick disclaimer. Tuxedo Computers sent this model over to me for review, but all of the opinions in this video, like always, are my own. I always retain full creative control over all of my content and this video is no exception. So with all of that out of the way, let's check out the Stellaris 15. So I usually like to start off all of my notebook reviews with a tour of the hardware itself. The chassis is comprised primarily of black aluminum, with a height that's a bit slimmer than most higher-end notebooks, though it's still going to be a bit thicker than ultra portables given the type of hardware that's inside. The new chassis on this model is intended to increase cooling efficiency, and it feels very firm and solid. It doesn't really have much in the way of flex, if any at all. On the front of the unit, you have a futuristic light strip that's pretty cool, and the keyboard is backlit as well. When it comes to ports, on the left hand side, you have a single USB A 3.2 port, as well as a separate microphone and audio jack. On the right hand side, you have two more USB 3.2 ports, as well as an SD card reader. On the back of the unit, you have a single USB C port with Thunderbolt 4, though Thunderbolt itself is limited only to the Intel model. If you order the model with the AMD CPU, then that USB-C port becomes a second generation USB 3.2 port instead. Also on the back, we have a physical ethernet port, as well as a barrel connector for power. There's also an HDMI port as well, so hooking it up to an external display is possible. Basically, it has the majority of all the ports you'd ever need. However, limiting Thunderbolt to Intel CPUs is a bit of a downside, but I'll blame Intel for that. They don't necessarily make it easy for that to be implemented with AMD CPUs. Next, let's talk about the display. The display on this model is pretty good. It's a 3K display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440. 
The refresh rate is 165 Hz, and it looks very sharp. As far as brightness is concerned, it's not the brightest display in the studio right now, but it's not the dimmest either. The brightness is acceptable. I would prefer that it was a little brighter, but it's still totally fine. The main bragging points here are the sharp colors and the high refresh rate. The keyboard on the Stellaris 15 is very unique, so we'll definitely need to talk about it. The type of keyboard we have here is known as an opto-mechanical keyboard, which is actually something I've never heard of before until now. Perhaps I spend too much time editing video and not enough time checking out keyboard types, but I digress. The keyboard on this model is supposed to give you some of the advantages of mechanical keyboards, but it's still shallow enough to fit in a notebook chassis. Features such as N-key rollover, anti-ghosting, and single-key illumination are definitely braggable. The typing experience is great. I love the way the keys feel. Definitely different than any other notebook keyboard I've ever used. I'm not even sure how to explain it, other than it feels similar to external mechanical keyboards, but with the key travel of a notebook keyboard. From what I can tell on their order page, though, only ISO keyboards seem to be available, which I'm not personally used to. It's just a matter of personal preference, though. There's nothing wrong with this keyboard at all. I'm just more accustomed to ANSI keyboards personally, because that's the majority of the keyboards that we have here in the United States. If you were to order your very own Tuxedo computer, I highly recommend that you check the keyboard type before you order it and make sure that you select the proper one. If in doubt, just send them an email, and I'm sure they can help you out. I also like the fact that there's a dedicated button to reach the Tuxedo Control Center. And not all Tuxedo notebooks have that button, but when it is present, I really enjoy that. I also like the cute little Tux character that's on the super key, that's pretty cool too. When it comes to the touchpad, I love the size of it, and I'm glad that the smaller touchpads that we used to endure are mostly a thing of the past. And this notebook follows the trend of having a larger touchpad, which is great. The touchpad itself feels nice, and it gets the job done. It's responsive, and although it doesn't feature physical buttons, it does have a physical click on the lower left and the lower right hand corners when you press them down, so it's almost the same thing. One downside that I've noticed though is that when I'm merely scrolling or swiping, the touchpad makes an odd rattling sound. When I place my finger on the touchpad, even without applying pressure, it just makes this strange sound and I'm not sure why. And I don't really like that sound, it's a bit distracting. So when it comes to my overall opinion on the touchpad, it's a bit of a step down from other models, mainly due to that rattling noise. So let's switch gears and talk about the internal speakers and the overall audio quality. I don't really have much to say about that other than the audio quality is fairly decent actually. Like most notebooks, the audio is light on the bass, but it still manages to sound good. I actually cranked the volume of a metal music video and there was no rattling in the speakers at all. And I had the volume all the way up. The vocals were clear, and you can hear the individual instruments, so I'd consider the sound quality overall a win. When it comes to performance, this is technically a gaming laptop, and I think it's awesome to have a Linux-based gaming laptop. The biggest thing to note about the performance is that it's going to largely depend on the configuration. There's several different options when you go to order your Stellaris 15. Most notably, there's two CPUs to choose between. You can spec this model with an AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX or an Intel Core i7 11800H. Both of these CPUs have 8 cores, 16 threads, and a maximum clock speed of 4.6 GHz. Where they differ though is with the cache. The Ryzen model has a 16 MB level 3 cache, while the Intel CPU has a 24 MB cache. So what should you choose? Well, it all depends on what's more important to you personally. I think it's safe to say that the majority of my audience prefers AMD. And that's not a bad decision. AMD is awesome. But even if you do choose an AMD system, you won't be completely free of binary blobs because there's no AMD graphics options. The GPU is always going to be an NVIDIA model regardless of which configuration you choose. And as far as the GPUs that you could choose between, your options include the RTX 3060, 3070, and 3080. 
So at the end of the day, all of the options are solid and will definitely perform well. But there's going to be a variance in performance depending on the configuration. That said, my review unit shipped with the AMD CPU and the RTX 3080. And since this is a gaming notebook, I have to talk about the gaming experience overall because that's a very important factor. And in my opinion, the performance of games is awesome. I was able to get some serious frame rates with Doom Eternal, as you can see here. Now keep in mind that there is a variance when it comes to the refresh rate between my recording PC and the display of this notebook. So of course there's going to be some tearing in the footage. I didn't bother to enable VSync or anything like that. And of course there might be some additional tearing due to my screen recorder, but when the computer is right in front of me, it looks awesome. On my end, I actually increased the graphics overall to Ultra, and it performs very well. So I do feel that if you are looking for a Linux gaming notebook, this is definitely a great choice. And the performance overall is very solid. Applications open very quickly. The computer boots very quickly. I have no complaints about the performance in any way, shape, or form. So in a nutshell, I'm going to call the performance of this notebook an overall win. Normally, I like to talk about the default operating system that ships with notebooks when I review them. However, Tuxedo OS, which is the default distro for Tuxedo computers, that's going through a bit of a migration right now because they are migrating to the Plasma desktop, and the current version of Tuxedo OS actually uses the Budgie desktop. And you know what? I agree with their decision to switch to Plasma. That's going to be awesome. But right now, this notebook is running the Budgie edition. That could change at any point in the future. I'm not sure when the Plasma Edition will come out. So if you were to order a Tuxedo computer, then you might get the Budgie Edition or the Plasma Edition. And both of them are great. I think the Plasma Edition is shaping up to be a bit better. That's just my opinion. But either way, you'll be well served by the operating system. But there's really not much for me to go over here when it comes to the OS because I've already covered it in other videos. And we're still on the same version of Tuxedo OS currently because it's actually basing on LTS. So it's the same distro that I've shown in other Tuxedo reviews. Now, if Tuxedo OS isn't your thing, you can also install Ubuntu and OpenSUSE as well. Specifically, they support the LTS version of Ubuntu. And there's several different versions of OpenSUSE with desktops such as XFCE, Plasma, and so on. So there's definitely some choices to play with if you want to go with something else. When it comes to battery life, it varies quite a bit on this model. If you crank the power all the way up, and I'm talking you move the CPU all the way to the fastest speed, you run the NVIDIA GPU at its fastest speed, and maybe you even crank the brightness of the display all the way up, you're going to lose power very quickly. In fact, in that case, the battery life would probably be less than an hour. However, you can get much more than that by just dialing down the settings. With the Tuxedo Control Center, you have full control over how much power you are actually using. And what I like about that is that you are in full control as far as the balance between battery life and power. At any given moment, you can crank up the GPU if you're playing some games. But if you're getting work done that doesn't require a lot of power, for example, web browsing, checking email, things like that, you can dial down the settings and it's actually going to last for a decent amount of time. Something like four or five hours or more, which is actually really good for a higher end computer because most of those are lucky to even get two hours regardless of what you set the settings to. I think this represents a more coming of age of laptops because we're no longer living in a world where battery life is always sacrificed. You could definitely find a balance between power and battery life. Overall, I think this notebook is really cool. I really like it. A Linux-powered gaming notebook? I mean, what could be better than that? That's just awesome. My advice to you guys is that if you were to order one of these for yourself, definitely open up the Tuxedo Control Center. It's not an afterthought here. You definitely need to check that out. I mean, the Tuxedo Control Center has always been useful, but this particular notebook, at least when I opened it up and started using it for the first time, Everything was cranked all the way to the max, and the battery life was really low. But when I, you know, played around with the profiles and dialed down the settings a bit, I was able to achieve some very decent hours when it comes to the battery, and you can too, by
by customizing the settings to fit your needs, and I recommend that you do that. Now, my only complaint overall is with the touchpad and that rattling noise. It's just, you know, it's just not something that I can tune out personally. But other than that, I think this notebook is definitely a win. It's solid, it has a great chassis, really powerful hardware, a really good screen. The speakers are really good too. And it also has a physical ethernet jack, which is definitely a bonus because, I mean, let's face it, a lot of people within my audience, we configure physical switches all the time and not having to reach for a dongle in order to do that, that's a win in my book. So let me know what you guys think of the Stellaris 15 and this review in general in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.